find yourself asking, what is the point of stats? Is the time spent learning it worth it just to pass a class? Well, there's this thing called data, it has characteristics, and making data make sense is the power of statistics. See, a long list of numbers is nice but not quite useful. What we need is to find a way to only focus on what's crucial. And here's where you might think, let me just find the average. Well, that's a great start, knowing the mean is an advantage. Compared to just raw data, the mean does us wonders. But relying on just the mean would be quite a blunder. To be beyond average, you should go beyond the average. Standard deviation, something you should want to manage. Calculating z-score might be a chore like cleaning, but I bet you'll want to know more when you understand its meaning. To be beyond average, you should go beyond the average. Standard deviation, something you should want to manage. Calculating z-score might be a chore like cleaning, but I bet you'll want to know more when you understand its meaning. Oh, it's okay. I'm tutoring statistics. You have two groups of people and want to know their ages. So you write their ages one by one on two separate pages. Now everyone in group one is 20 years old, which makes their average age 20 low. And behold, group two has a different story, because half the people are 10, but the other half are 30, so the average is 20 again. These two groups are quite different, that's what we want to claim. But just looking at averages, we saw they were the same. Now let's make a new friend sigma, or standard deviation, it's this whole little hop us make of this little complication. It measures how far the average is from each individual. The formula looks scary, but applying it is really cool. The gist of it really is how spread out the numbers are, which means sigma is higher when all the numbers are really far. So group 2 has a high sigma, group 1's is actually zero, and if you can now see why that's true, you're a sigma superhero. To be beyond average, you should go beyond the average. Standard deviation, something you should want to manage. Calculating z-score might be a chore like cleaning, but I bet you'll want to know more when you understand its meaning. To be beyond average, you should go beyond the average. Standard deviation, something you should want to manage. Calculating z-score might be a chore like cleaning, but I bet you'll want to know more when you understand its meaning. You've made a painting that you're looking to sell The mean price is 200 but your painting's rather swell So yours will be above the mean, that's something you can tell You sold yours for 250 so it seems like you've done well $50 above average, so you're feeling content But you wonder if your painting was in the top 1% Is 50 above average really all that high? Well that depends on whether other prices are nearby So what we need to quantify is how prices are spread out But we already have that Sigma without a doubt So now how many sigmas above the mean are we? There's actually a name for that value, it's called Z So let's recap what Z-score means, the name might seem bizarre But all it says is how many sigmas from the mean we are So if sigma is 50, well then that tells us a ton We're one sigma above average, so the Z-score would be one Let's say you did the math and found your sigma to be 10 We're five sigmas above average, so the Z is five then The cool thing about Z is that it has its own table, which lets us solve problems we were previously unable. You're in the top 1% if Z is 2.3 or more, and since our Z is 5, we're in the 1% for sure. I hope you now can see how to come to this conclusion, and that Sigma and Z are no longer a confusion.